headless knight. He must be the product of the venomization. Well, he definitely looks vicious enough. <laughs> Not as vicious as our velvet, though. No escape! Where's his voice even coming from? I don't know. Look inside. You're the well, that takes care of that. Yeah. I feel something again. More malevolence? No, another Earth Pulse point. It must be on this island. I sense it too. It's very close. Directly underneath us, I would guess. What is this place? Welcome to the most secure cell in the entire complex. The darkest hole in Titania. Feel anything, Lafayette? Yeah. I think this is the Earth Pulse Point. If this cell is where the Earth Pulse Point is, then does that mean it housed Etherian? Yeah. And a real hungry one at that. Every day. They would toss demons into its cell. It would devour its fill, then wipe the blood from its lips. Never once realizing, it was delivering to Inominat the malevolence of hundreds of demons and prisoners. And then one day, there appeared before it a female Moloch, who shattered the barrier and freed the Therian from its cage. But the Therian knew no mercy, and it devoured its liberator. And it was then... It was then I obtained the power. The power to avenge my brother! Velvet... You're a Therian? This prison island was a feeding ground for the Therian, harnessing the malevolence created by the prisoners within. But because Velvet escaped, the malevolence went out of control. Wow, the same darn thing that happened back in Kamoana's village. Lord Artorius would never have done such a thing. No, what's so unbelievable? That he used his wife's brother as a human sacrifice? That he imprisoned his wife's sister? Because that's what your damned Holy Shepherd did! All to get his hands on Inominat's power! I'm sure he... he had a reason for... A reason?! To spare the world of its pain! Don't give me that! Who will spare my brother's pain? Who will soothe my brother's despair?! He murdered my little brother Loppy! And you'll stand there and tell me it was for the greater good?! At any rate, that's one less Therian for us to track down. Velvet. Help! Eleanor! Kamoana? What? Did Velvet yell at you so hard you're starting to hear voices now? I have a feeling something's wrong. Kamoana could be in danger. But... we already beat the Headless Knight. I still can't shake this feeling. Please, let's go back and check on them.
Velvet is Etherian, is she? I knew there was something off about her. But it's what she cried out that's really on my mind. Laffy said, Is Velvet truly Lord Artorius's younger sister? She never told me. If it were true, I suppose it would explain her knowledge of Lord Artorius's training. If you're so curious, why not ask her yourself? Hey, Velvet, what's your connection to Artorius? Uh, Rokuro, have some tact! I heard you whispering. It doesn't bother me. Artorius was married to my late sister, Selica. He was our brother-in-law. We lived together for more than ten years. That does explain a few things. So he sacrificed his little brother and turned his sister into a Therian. But... you were his family. To his view of the grand scheme, family is inconsequential. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. All he did was act according to his ideal logic. <sighs> well, enough chit-chat. Let's get moving. So it turns out that Velvet is a Therian who consumes malevolence. And too much malevolence is what changes people into demons. Strong enough malevolence can persist after the person who created it dies, turning their corpse or spirit into a raging monster. That's how undead and phantom demons come about. Then the demons Velvet killed turned back into humans because she devoured their malevolence. Yeah, and consequently, they avoided becoming undead or anything like that. So she saved them. Well, I mean, a corpse is a corpse, of course, of course. Do you think she could devour only the malevolence and turn a living demon human again? Unfortunately, that's impossible due to malevolence's self-reinforcing nature. When Therians are connected to Enominot through an Earth Pulse point, they seem to be able to absorb small concentrations of malevolence from the surrounding area and inhibit the creation of new demons. But any human who builds up enough malevolence to turn into a demon will keep producing malevolence as long as they live. That's right. To devour any malevolence, I need to cut it off at the source. That's how my powers work. Velvet, I'm sorry. I don't mind it. Actually, I find it convenient. This way, I'll never forget my hatred for Artorius. Plus, as long as you stay away from an Earth Pulse point, you get to keep the power of any malevolence you consume. Fuel for my hatred, yes. Uh. I unleashed all my power. Maybe I overdid it.
I'll finish this quick. Who is that? The power! Your style is really unique. Just wait until I pull out the good stuff. <laughs> I'll finish this now. <laughs> 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 Sorry to catch you down. I'll finish this quickly. A complete victory! Sweetheart. A headless knight and a horse demon. It's giving off a ton of malevolence. This must be the true survivor of the venomization process. Oh, I get it. The dying exorcist lady wasn't saying headless knight is back. She was going for headless knight on horseback. Whatever the case, we'll fight whoever we have to to claim this island. Oh, now I can't help but wonder how the Ready to die? Think you can dodge? Just try! Perfect mayhem! No mercy! Wounds that won't shield! Hard to deflect! Lethal pay! That's venomization, all right. Definitely stronger than that headless lump of armor. I beg your pardon? Not you. <laughs> the demon from the villa? No, look! It's absorbing the malevolence. It's Ethereum. Actually, that hawk is Griffin, my one and only friend. <laughs> A damned Therian. So that's what Tabitha meant when she said we'd find out shortly. But your highness, why do you have a Therian? It's like I said, Griffin has been my dear friend ever since I was a child. Even if he's a Therian now, that hasn't changed. So you knew you were helping a Therian escape. What are you plotting? 
I have no plots or schemes. I just want Griffin to be free. I guess we shouldn't be surprised. The crown prince and future king, he's gonna do whatever he likes. <laughs> I suppose I am at that. But if I am, it's the first time I've ever been allowed a choice of my own. When you're a prince, you're not a person. You're an institution, one designed to serve the state and its people. Say, for instance, you are doing your law studies and your back suddenly itches. What do you do? I mean, I'd scratch it. Who wouldn't? When I did that, my tutor gave me a whipping so hard the blood ran down my back. The reason being that I prioritized a personal feeling, that is to say my itch, over my studies in service of the state. Uh. Seeing Griffin lay claim to the skies, let me imagine my own freedom. It was my lone solace over the years. But then, he turned out to be responsive to Inominat's power. I take it the Midgand royal family is well aware that the Abbey is creating Therians? Of course. How could we not? The Kingdom offers unequivocal support to Shepherd Artorius' vision of reason and will. Even so, if there was one thing I could never permit, it was seeing Griffin locked up and unable to fly. Never. I tricked the exorcist on guard and disabled the barrier. But then Griffin attacked the exorcist and killed him. That's why you said you could never go back. Eh, they can overlook a single dead exorcist, but with Etherian removed, malevolence will engulf the capital. I knew full well what I was doing. And yet, I couldn't watch my friend's life be stripped away. Your Highness. He chose a single bird over the world. Why do you think that birds fly? That's what Lord Artorius asked me. My anatomy book says birds can fly because their bones are light and their wing muscles are enormously strong. Birds fly because a bird that cannot fly is no bird at all. And that's what I think. I understand now. As long as you remain on this island, you may do as you please. But if you try to escape, I'll kill you. That should work. This way we'll have him on hand if we ever need a hostage. Understood. I appreciate you letting Griffin and me stay here. Well, now that that's taken care of, let's build ourselves a hideout. Hey, Velvet, do you know where Eleanor is? Wasn't she just playing with you? Yeah, but then she left. I'm worried because she looked pretty sad. Can you go find her? Why me? Mm. All right, all right, fine. Just don't cry on me, okay?
Hey, Rokuro, have you seen Eleanor? Uh, probably. I don't know. <sighs> Get drunk. Just try not to go overboard. But, man, are we a bunch of screw-ups or what? I mean, we've kidnapped a prince now. They gotta have laws against that. Broke out of prison, flattened Helovis, tried to assassinate a shepherd. Hey, how many infractions do you think we're on the hook for? Pardon me if I don't stop and count. If you don't like it, nobody's forcing you to tag along. No, I still haven't repaid my debt to you. You say that, but you really just want to beat Shigure, don't you? Whoa, to me, they're both connected. It's a long story, but I can tell you if you... I'll pass. Well, join me for a drink then? Can't. I'm 19. Huh. A most interesting interpretation. What do you make of this part here, then? Hmm. Well, if you pronounce it Loney Kyle, then it'd mean Midriff, which probably isn't right. Maybe Muse Mila? Well, that would make this passage read, Porges are nummy. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's not right either. <laughs> <sighs> What's wrong, Velvet? Have you seen Eleanor? No, I haven't. Sorry, I know I'm supposed to watch her. Just... Read somewhere where there's more light. You'll hurt your eyes like this. Uh, okay. <laughs>